having turned his left ankle against Takayasu and put up only fly-like resistance to Dai Eisho before his November withdrawal, new Ozeki Shodai spent his winter a worried man. With the rank he'd gained through amazing transformations of strength and fortune perhaps to be lost, Shodai spoke as if the Ryogoku sky were falling in while the Sumida River was bursting its banks. But as such anxiety and negativity reigned, sumo writers concluded, it's just Shodai being Shodai, the hypochondriac. Deep down, even he must admit, he was awesome in September, unbeaten prior to the injury in November, and first in the informal sumo grip strength contest. And if you hit his chest with a mallet, the mallet cries foul. Shodai being finally called to the ring was among the tenser moments on January day one, with fans anxious to see whether he'd healed. I'm only going forward because my ankle feels strange going back, was what he'd promised, desperate to avoid the rope dance situations that injured him. But could he cushion a Hokuto Fuji charge? With that colossal chest and a giant arm to catch him, who needs perfect ankles? Day 2 reunited him with the man he stressed he wasn't scared to face, Takayasu. These two like to entertain us. Short Eye begins with the same tactics deployed on Hokuto Fuji, only all-rounder Takayasu can defend them. A switch from inside left to outside right forces Short Eye to counter with a scoop, then bring the match to the center when that fails. Too solid to be slapped down, Short Eye displays his fine sumo sense by slashing the left inside and charging for the rope. And that's quite some charge to take Takayasu off his feet. Next though, the deja vu fixture list threw up Dai Eisho, and this time he was really nervous. Unable to halt the whirly gig of thrusts, he got out before he got hurt, scarce conceiving how crucial that defeat could be. A much easier ride with Koto Shoho on day 4 restored rhythm, which improved further on day 5. Can't get the right inside? Then press down from the outside. Can't get that to work? Then slide the left inside as he turns and scoop him off balance. On day six, he had to retain his balance after a Toshinoshin arm lock, then got both chunky biceps inside for complete control. And he was just as dominant against Ornoshaw. Clamping with the left, cutting him with the right, to finish week one with six wins, beyond even his expectations. Then on day eight, he met hyper-confident Mitake Umi. Against Ozeki, that is.
Mitake Umi scores big with his hit on the armpit, leading Shodai to try scooping him away with the left. But Mitake's right hand fights its way inside, causing Shodai to switch maneuvers to his right. This he does quite ingeniously with the clamp and arm pull, but Mitake plants his right foot so well and again breaches the left armpit. With the head in a boring position, he pulls Shodai off balance, then hammers him with a left to the ribs, the decoy for a raid on the belt. That spelled Shodai's point of no return, and he fell two wins behind leader Dai Eisho. But from day nine, this Ozeki seemed blessed with a fortune no hypochondriac could believe. His left parries went unanswered by nemesis Tamawashi, while on day 10, two failed scoop throws went unpunished, the match then rescued by a divine swivel and thrust which even survived the judge's decision. <laughs> on day 11, he went one better, surviving two judges' decisions and the referee's call for Okinomi, despite being outfought twice. And after a more orthodox, less eventful dismissal of Ryuden on day 12, Shodai taxed the judges again on day 13. Even the referee was now playing percentages, swirling his fan from Takano Sho to Shodai on second thoughts. And despite breaking all his rules about going backwards, Shodai somehow landed safely and after Takano Sho, moving to 11 and 2 and level with Dai Eisho in the home stretch. Now Mr. Negative would have to talk titles, but his thoughts would most likely return to the one he blew. January 2020, day 14. Try as he might to bury that loss to Tokushoryu, the mental replays kept running. He fashioned an even better winning position against Teruno Fuji that afternoon, two of them in fact, but again faltered, ultimately to be yanked off his feet and vanquished. I had him on the rope several times, and it's vexing not to have finished him off, he said. You might say it was a lack of stamina. Certainly, my legs just collapsed. Short Eye's vow to put things right on day 14 in future rang hollow, though. His style dictates that he fights on the edge, with too many variables to guarantee outcomes. I told myself I could still somehow win it on day 15, he said at the very end. But by the time this match with Asanayama occurred, Dai Eisho was already champion. Now it was a mere question of pride and prize money. His face showed how livid he was to have his path blocked by a daredevil ref, but all in all, he could go home contented. In some way, I managed to project an Ozeki's presence, he said. Better still, my demotion threat is gone. It was a horrible spot to be in. Thus, in the past six tournaments he's finished, has Shodai scored 11 or above in five. He's proven himself a wonderful fighter, but now must find a way to stay a healthy one. <laughs>